Muchísimas gracias. Buenas tardes. Mucho gusto. Entiendo que tengo que hablar en inglés. ¿Sí?
and how the dreams come true. Having heroic aspirations is a must for leadership. That's what we believe in here in this place. We bring in 500 kids from all over the nation, from rural areas, from poor families. Just to tell them for five hours, you are a leader. You can be president, you can be an architect, you can be a great debater. You can be whatever you want. If it was so, the violin, or you can be off in disguise, like Jose Hernandez did, this Mexican fellow who was a migrant who led his community very close from here, very young and without education or without money. And at nine years old, he saw the Apollo ship in the sky. That very moment, he decided he was going to be there one day. But he had, first, he had to go to school, then he had to go to college, then he had to go to university, then he had to get his master's degree, then he had to learn to pilot airplanes. Forty years took him to get out there. But when you see him in that very moment when he is in front of an audience, a TV audience of more than 250 million people, you can see that he was proud and satisfied with what he did. <coughs> I don't know if you saw the picture of Nelson Mandela when he's coming out of jail in South Africa. He comes out so strong, so powerful, so determined. You just have to look at him and you understand and you know that he knew what he was going to do that very moment. Because he had enough time to be pledged to think, to learn about himself and about his purpose. He moved ahead and he changed the nation. Same as Martin Luther King did in the United States. Or like Muhammad Gandhi did in India. Or like Lev Palesa did in Poland, in Philly, the Communist Empire. That's the power we all have within. If you just have shown that here, the power of ideas, the power of our world, the power of our dreams, the power of our purpose. We've been talking here about crime, police, security, violence, drugs. I read the Mariscal Sucre, when he became a candidate major in the city of Quito, they asked him, what kind of police are we going to have in this city? And he said, the best police that can exist is the one within ourselves. If we impose our own opinions, if we respect each other, he will respect society. <coughs> then we might end up with crime. So it's again that power we all have to win in. But when you analyze Mexico during the last five years, 60,000 kids have been killed. 60,000. Another 60,000 that killed them. And it's estimated about another 100,000 that have joined the cartels to retail, distribute, and sell drugs. 250,000 kids. I can assure you they were not more criminals 
they did not have criminality on their genes. Some way along the path, they lost the purpose, or they didn't have the needed opportunities that we all need. Yes, poverty has to do with crime. Yes, lack of opportunities has to do with crime. Yes, corruption has to do with crime. But at the very end, it's also ourselves that have to do with crime. <coughs> Maybe those kids come from a broken family. A family that was so poor that they had to migrate. And the man, the husband is in the state working hard to send some money to his family. And the women, a heroic leader, is here feeding the children, educating the children, bringing the water from faraway places so that the kids will have water to drink. No time to educate. No time to do what families and homes do most everywhere. Those are the kids that were killed or that joined the cartel. I'm sure they look for a scholarship or they look for an opportunity to be here in Central Fox debating like you just have done. And they didn't have that opportunity. They looked for a job, and they didn't find it. So it's a lot of things we must think about before we judge kids. This is a great responsibility each and every one of you here and us here in this room have. Because very unfortunately, all throughout Latin America, only 22 kids out of each 100 have the opportunity to be in a university. 78 don't have that opportunity. So you're very privileged for the opportunity that you have, but this imposes a great responsibility over our shoulders. This really should move us to be for others, to make sure that we build the opportunity that those kids need. The world is changing, and it's changing very fast. The shift from west to east is on the move. Very soon it's possible that the center of gravity of finance, of markets, of power will be different to what it is today. But that's what the forecasters have built as a trend. But as mentioned in the book, the next 10 years, a span of 10 years has to do with leaders. And is he who is selected president in Mexico, or was just elected? Is he who is going to be elected president in the States, or is he or you or she that will have the opportunities to build the world? What happens to this next year will be a consequence of our leadership, of what we do or what we do not. Maybe a hundred years will be built by trains. But the next ten years is in our hands, in each and every one of us. So I hope that this visit to this place, this place of ideas and leadership, we dream of seeing these ideas fly all around Latin America and the world. We dream about these leaders moving mountains, climbing the Everest, going to the moon or to Mars, participating in arts, culture, 
developing love, understanding, tolerance, solidarity in this world. Let us never forget about that asset, the very strong tool to reach our dreams and our purpose, love. And this is what we should have. And this is why this 21st century is a century of women with a vision, with a love, with a commitment. It's the way we're going to build this world. Here is home for you. Martha and I want to share our love with you. Yes, I'm in love with Miss, Mrs. Blackbird. She's from the Blackberry. Everything. She, she destroys one Blackberry every month. Because she gets with the name. And believe me, one month, no more Blackberry. She means a new one. I love her. We share our dream. We share our faith, we want to share it with you. We want you to enjoy this last moment that you're going to be here with us. And thank you for your visit. It's good for us. When you're on the top, when you have reached two meters high, like me, <laughs> when you're on the top, when you have reached 70 years of age, when you're at the top because you work in the private sector, because you work on the farm, the garden, and you work in poverty, serving others and being for others, you have the capacity to be optimist. And I'm totally optimist that we'll see a better world this century because I have seen you here on the stage. There's no winners, no losers. Everybody wins doing what you're doing. God bless you.